So currently taking out the headlining, there's these units here which essentially have these small hooks where you'd hang shirts and things like that and they have a small picture of a coat hanger on them. Now if you pull them away, there'll be a small just uh, Phillips head screw in there that connects it to the roof and uh, pins the headliner up. Um, I am honestly doing this a little bit sort of off the cuff and I have watched a video on how to do it but I don't think I'm executing it very faithfully. I am kind of finding out as I go along here. However, I'm making some progress. This is another one where I've uh, disconnected the battery as well, uh, mainly because I don't really want to tempt fate with any airbags and uh, also you've got things like your uh, vanity mirrors here they're called and they usually have lights in them and things like that which you know will be wired. I'm just taking off this pillar here and you open that up with a flathead screwdriver along the top. There's another one over there and basically what I'm going to be doing is taking all the bits of plastic trim down just so I can expose the headliner and uh, get to the metal roof. So 10 millimeter bolt holding that in you can see I've just pulled it away here. I believe this is the airbag, so I'm trying not to, you know, fiddle too much of that. Um, on to the next one. You can see here the headliner taken out, and we have cut a hole in the roof. I'll be showing some footage of how we did that in just a second. You might be able to have seen, I've also had some rubber trim around it. This is us cutting the hole in the roof, the jigsaw that we bought. This is the rubber trim that we just applied with a bit of tiger glue and it just goes all the way around. You can see here where I've sanded down the sides. That's because when you use a jigsaw, you will get quite jagged edges. There were small bits of nip and tuck to do with the trim. However, it was quite easy overall. And the point of this as well, of course, is just make sure it's waterproof. Now, this is an idea that I had initially, and that was to use essentially a L-shaped bit of metal screwed into the roof with the bolts here and then you'd attach onto that um, the sort of thing that you might have on the floor if you're laying down some carpet, uh, it's called Antinox. Uh, that didn't end up being used in the end, but I've got a bit of footage here of what I was trying to do with it. As you can see, it was going to fold up, and the idea was that we'd have quite a light popped up on top of here that could be supported by these sides. You can see the bits here where we've cut out um, a really obvious bit of structural rigidity for the roof of the car. Uh, in the case of a rollover, the thing's now going to crush at the top. So what we are going to be doing is once once we take the Antinox uh, root pop top mechanism off, is we're actually going to be replacing it with a skylight, as you can see here. Now this is Karen in all her glory now. She's finished. She's got a skylight in rather than the pop-up roof, and here's how we made that. So the way that we did it is, first of all, we put some bits of wood in those holes in the roof that I've just shown you, where there used to be brackets. We then built a frame on top of that, which we could then attach the skylight to, and we've used gaffer tape, waterproof gaffer tape, and uh, what's called shed cladding or bitumen cladding, you might know it as, that you would usually find at the top of the shed, again to waterproof it, and that has made a really nice skylight. We've got ourselves a bed here. Now, basically, on the side where you can see Sarah, you've got every other slat drilled into the bit of wood across the top. And on my side here, you've got, again, every other slat, but obviously the next one along. And the idea is that the whole thing comes apart, as you can see, like this. The point of that is to essentially have a mattress on it that folds up into three equally sized pieces but then when we pull this out we can flatten the mattress out again and uh, that gives you a really quite comfy mattress to sleep on with plenty of space you want to make sure that you're using the right kind of wood for this you do not want to go with wood that's so weak that this will snap when you're on it um, but you can see here how it works it comes all the way up to those front seats works really well and here you can see the mattress in the back. It can also be folded up to use a little bit like a couch, but I think Karen looks amazing here. We actually had to buy a new set of stow and go covers, 
but it wasn't long before we got her out for the first adventure. We're going to keep you up to date because there's going to be more than a few things that we change on Karen, but I'd like to thank you all for watching. Take care.